لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين رحمة للعالمين طه وياسين بالقاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى ال الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين المنتجبين ورحمة الله على محبيهم ولعنة الله على اعدائهم وقاتليهم وغاصب حقوق حقهم ومنكر فضائلهم اجمعين من يومنا هذا إلى يوم الدين ما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الحكيم وفرقانه المجيد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن عتينا كل قوثر فصلي لربك وانحر إن شانيك هو الأبتار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى محمد Respected sisters and brothers, my youngsters, my elders, Assalamu alaikum jamiyah. Continuing our discussion from yesterday night on the Lady of Light, on the daughter of Rasulullah, on the wife of Amir al-Mu'mineen, on the mother of eleven Ayyumma, eleven Imams of the Ahlul Bayt. And the trade titles can go on, but inshallah we want to continue the discussion and I know that Yesterday I took a little extra time, being a Saturday. I do ask the Mumin for forgiveness. It's not my style to do that, but inshallah tonight, because tomorrow is a weeknight, I will inshallah be careful on that as well. Just that there was a lot that we needed to just, is this that was a preliminary, an introductory discussion. And inshallah today we'll try to conclude. I did not even start the surah yesterday. And as you noticed, my own majburi was, my own difficulties, I could not even start the surah yesterday, which was the original intention in these days of Hazrat and Fatima Zahra. May Allah bless you for your sabr, for listening, inshallah. And this is how we give condolences to the Ahlul Bayt. You see, when we are visiting each other, when somebody passes away, in fact, one of the reasons yesterday that I arrived into Montreal was we had a burial of a young child, a young baby fetus that had passed away. And, I, and incidentally, coincidentally, or actually deliberately, the parents named the young the baby uh, Moksin in memory of Hazrat Fatima Zahra salamu alayhi So when we give condolences to each other, when we are giving condolences, we visit the family of somebody who has passed away. But when we are giving condolences to the Ahlul Bayt, we come to the Imam Bargah, the house of the Imam, to give condolences oh, to the Ahlul Bayt. So for your sabr, inshallah, for that, Allah Ta'ala will give you your reward. And the Ahlul Bayt, inshallah, will take your hands on the Day of Judgment towards Jannah, inshallah. This is the, the, the Ahlul Bayt's promise, inshallah. Wa Muhammad al the status, the maqam of Hazrat Fatima Zahra, we just began yesterday, we just started the discussion and we cannot even, there's no ending to that discussion. The ayat of the Qur'an Majid on the Ahlul Bayt are so many that even the Mufassirin, the commentators of the Qur'an have not been able to give a number as to how many ayat in the Qur'an Majid are referring to Ahlul Bayt and the Fadail of Ahlul Bayt. Wow. So one of the things that I wanted to show in today's discussion because I began a few things yesterday and one of the things that I had mentioned that I would continue to do was when we were talking about Fadak. Then why did Hazrat Zahra go for the issue of Fadak? Why did she go? And in fact, when the first Khalifa saw the displeasure of Fatima Zahra on this issue and he remembered and he knew, of course he knew what the hadith of Rasulullah was about Fatima Zahra. Nobody could say that they did not know. Everybody knew what was the station of Hazrat Zahra in the eyes of Rasulullah and of course in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was no issue. There was a point where he actually took the documents of Fadak to return it to her. The actual, Dr. Muhammad Samawi Tejani in his book, he actually mentions this in his writings. He said that a point came when he saw the displeasure of Hazrat Zahra. Because you see, the displeasure of Hazrat Zahra is very different than when you and I are displeased. We have to understand this. And the difference has been, not from our writings. We of course understand it. We are followers of Ahlul Bayt, we are lovers of Ali Muhammad, we know what the reality is. But Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari, the author of Sahih Bukhari, 
He is mentioning in there, actually in the, in the, in the course of the discussion on Surah Al-Fatiha, whereby he was reaching the end part, he was just talking about it. And in the end, you know, we say that, Oh Allah, guide us on the right path. Ehdina Surat Al-Mustaqim. We, as uh, followers of Allah, we say, keep us on the right path. Ehdina Surat Al-Mustaqim. Surat Al-Ladina Ni'umta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Wa Laddalli Ghayr Al-Maghdubi. He was just talking about this. And he is writing in his writings, Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn Bukhari, he is narrating that when the Holy Prophet of Islam was talking about the word of Adam here, he said that, who he mentions, and Imam Ismail is, Imam Bukhari is writing this, he said that whoever hurts Fatima Zahra, whoever hurts Fatima Zahra, has hurt me, Qala Rasulullah Whoever hurts me has hurt Allah, has angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever angers Allah, wa huwa maghdub. This is his writing. So he was saying, and everybody knew that. So when the Khalifa decided to realize that Hazrat Fatima Zahra is angry, she's not upset, he decided to take the property of the, the title deeds of Hazrat back to her. As he was going, he was stopped. And he was asked by another, Where are you going? I'm returning the property that belongs to Fatima Zahra. He said, No. He said, Well, her arguments were correct. She is Siddiqa Akbar. She is Siddiqa Tahira. She is the truthful one. You see, when you and I call each other Siddiq, or when Muslims call somebody or another Siddiq, that is our fallible reference to Siddiq. Well, when the one who is infallible refers to Fatima Zahra as Siddiq, then that has come from the head. You are. He is referring. So he, the Khalifa says, I'm returning for the other one asks, he tells him, do you realize what you are doing? Mahada, what are you doing? Chikari Kuni. If you acknowledge the sadaqat of Fatima Zahra on the issue of father, tomorrow she will come and say, that with the same honesty, with the same integrity, with the same sadaqat, she will say, the Khilafat belongs to Ali ibn Abi Talib, not to you. Then what will you do? Wow. Then what will you do? The papers of father were torn and thrown away. They were never returned to. He is writing this. I'm not saying anything. This is the references. If you want the references, I, because of the time factor, I can give it to you afterwards, inshallah, if anybody wishes. But his writings are available everywhere. And Sayyid Bukhari is also available for anybody to read on the internet or elsewhere. Okay, so what we're saying is that the rights is what Hazrat Zahra was talking about, standing up for. The right, the issue of Fadat was not just a property or a fertile land. It was a principle that was being debated. I'll tell you something, my sisters, my brothers, my young sisters, my elders. And I wish and I hope that this message reaches, uh, reaches to the youths, to the youngsters, to our community at far and large. Over these 1400 years that we have been under suffering, the Shias have been suffering, tortures, untold calamities, man-made. Eh? I'm not talking about natural disasters, I'm talking about man-made, man-created. What has kept us alive? If you look at the dynasties of the Umayyads, you look at the Khulafa at the beginning, you look at the Khulafa of the Umayyads, you look at the Bami Abbas, you look at every era, except for a few very, very brief periods in Islamic history, we have been subject to the sword, to the gun, to the tank, to the bullet, whatever you want to call it in this era, whatever. And every community had decided, because the Umayyads had wanted to annihilate and eradicate the Shias altogether. This is what the murder of Imam Hussein was all about. The Abu Abbas had a similar policy that they wanted to eliminate and eradicate the Shias. Why should there be any Shias? Why should there be anybody, anybody? Because as long as there are Shias, there is a threat to our Khilafah. There is a threat to our throne. There is a threat to our Kursi. And then even in modern era, in the modern era, if you remember the 1991 Intifada in Iraq, the slogans in the Haramain, you see the beautiful shrines, big pictures of Mullah Hussain, Mullah Abbas, alayhi wa salam, shrine. What was the slogan that they used to write, that Saddam's people read? La Shi'ati ba'da al-yawm. La Shi'ati ba'da al-yawm. No Shias after today. You go to Karachi with my own eyes near my in-law's house. I saw it with my own eyes. Kafir, kafir, Shia, kafir, kafir, kafir. Allahu Akbar, what is the problem you have with us? What is the issue? And the question that I want to discuss in today's discussion is, despite every power wanting to eliminate us, despite every khilafat, every kingdom, 
And you look at the, the history of Salado, then you will see what I'm talking about. You see in every in the eras that Salado is unspeakable. George Jordak in his Sauta al Aliyat al Insaniya, he goes into a great deal of depth about the suffering of the Shias in the early ages and ongoing. And you will see Suleiman Katani, these are both non Muslim writers by the Christian, uh, Lebanese Christians, who are writing about Amir al George Jordak. And Suleiman Katani, his book was Imam Ali, Source of Pine Wisdom and Light. Talking about the Shias, talking about the sufferings. And the question is, what protected us? What kept us alive? Of course, we'll say the shadow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the grace of Ahlul Bayt. But on a practical level, there was something as well. The grace of the Ahlul Bayt is definitely there. The Fadl, the Ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely there. But on a practical level, from a worldly level, there was two things that protected us. And if you see today, I'm talking about this time now. These are the two things that are being attacked, not by the enemies of the Shias, but in some cases by the Shias themselves. I'm coming to very sensitive areas. But I have an obligation to my Imam, for he will question me. And I have an obligation and a, and a haq to my Allah to make sure that whatever needs to be said is said. From our own community, these voices are rising. What are the two? If you look at why Hazrat the Zahra stood, and I started this yesterday, the father, the property of Fadha did not just represent a piece of land. It represented the economic independence of the followers of Ali Muhammad, including Ali Muhammad themselves. It was the financial independence because it generated enough revenue. And I was reading that in today's dollars, it was a British report I was reading, that in today's dollars, it was more than seven, you know, several million pounds sterling. It was about dollar eighty to a pound right now. Several million pounds sterling would be in today's dollars the value of what Fadda generates in one year. In one year. And as a result of that, if that property was there given, then no follower of Imam Ali and Fatima Zahra sallallahu would ever need to go to anybody's doorstep for their hug for their risk. And that economic independence, how did that now evolve? If you look today, that economic independence of the Shias, how is it? I mentioned yesterday that they, you know, in Hijaz in Saudi Arabia, they do the dua for Fahd and all that. And people said, I've asked, I've asked me. Yeah, but you know, we've gone to Qum, we've gone to Tehran, we've done Namaz al-Jamaat and Mashhad. After that, they also prayed dua for the Rahbar. Of course. Look at the lifestyle of the Rahbar, look at the lifestyle of the Maraja, look at the lifestyle of the ulama al deen who have given their lives in the way of Islam and who are serving in Islam. And you see their lives, how they live. I have been to their homes, to their houses, to their offices. You see how they live. And you see how these princes and kings live. Allah. You will see the answer yourself. Allah. You will see the answer. And if you have visited Ayatollah Sistani, how is this house? Is it a palace? Is it a mansion? Is it a little gully? Shah Rasul in Najaf. You see how it is. You see how their lives are, and then you will see what the difference is. It's not a blind dua we're doing. We're doing the dua because of the haq. And so when you look at this, you will find that this independence came about how? And you will see that today this is a result of Sahmi Imam, the khums that Surah Al-Fal talks about. And the khums has been the economic independence of the Shia community, and one of the steps, in my conclusion and opinion, that has kept us alive in these 12 to 1300 years. The second, the second article of our faith that has kept us firm and standing is the marja'iyat. The marja'iyat from Ghaybat al-Sugra. Notice I said Ghaybat al-Sugra, not Ghaybat al-Kubra. Because even in the lives of the Aimma, in the time of Imam Jafar ibn Muhammad, in the time of Imam Zain al Abdi, Salaamu Alaikum. What's a lot of Muhammad each of the Aimma, and we have got names of those ulama, scholars in the time of the Aimma, who the Imams referred to the people. In the time of Imam Sadiq Abu Basir was told by the Imam, sit in the masjid, give the answers of people's Messiah. Give them nasihat, give them advice. On my behalf, answer their queries. Imam al Ma'asum is telling a Ghayr Ma'asum, an Alim, a Mujtahid, a Faqih. In the time of Imam Hussein ibn Ali al Islam himself, 
When he writes a letter to Habib ibn Madahir in Kufa, what is he writing? Min Hussein bin Ali ila rajulun faqihun mujtahidun Habib ibn Madahir. Yeah, he recognizes the uloom, the ilm of Habib ibn Madahir. He didn't say, you are my buddy, you are my friend, you are my childhood, we grew up together. Is that the name Bukhara? Kaki, you are a mujtahid. You are a mujtahid. You are an alim. You are a faqih, a jurisprudent. And the Imam calls him and addresses him that way. I mean, for an Imam and Masum to talk to anybody, a friend of his like that, imagine. He is giving the importance of ilm. So even in the times of the Imam, they had delegated, they had delegated that responsibility to others. And that is why this, these two things, Marjariyat and the Khums, are the two things that today scholars of every stripe are attacking. Well, you know, Marjariyat, if all known people, you know, Khums, people used to bury in the time of Ghaibat the Sukhara and this and that. There are countless arguments that are given. Because they realized one thing. By killing the Shias, murdering them, annihilating them, causing atrocities, enslaving them, the plan didn't work. The Shias have continued to grow. That every country in the world where there is a civilization, there is a Shia play coming in place of worship. Wow. Wow. Every Muharram, every Muharram, I get an email, I get a message, I get a WhatsApp, I get a note saying that this place where there was never a Zadari of Sayyidu there is now a Zadari of Sayyidu In the corners of the Scandinavian countries where human life is difficult to exist, I saw a flag of Imam Hussein ibn Ali. Hussein! Hussein! They realized by killing the Shias, they did not succeed. So what do you do to an ayah? How do you destroy the Shia community? How do you destroy the followers of Ali Muhammad? You find out what their sensitivities are and what their power has been in these 1400 years. Where is their power? Because the marja'iyyat, remember one thing, leads us towards the muhabbat of Ahlul Bayt. And I have read our own, some of our people, our so-called scholars. Scholars in the Shia community were saying that the ismat of the Ahlul Bayt is doubtful. I've read it with my own eyes. I would not have told you from my mother's of hand. That, uh, you know, who said, if Imam, this is the argument, this is the argument. If Imam Hussein had the elder ghaib that he was going to be killed in Karbala, then he's committing suicide. He went to Karbala to commit suicide. <laughs> if, if, this is, these are the questions, I'm, I'm giving you the scenario. If Imam Radha knew that that grape has got poison in it, for him to eat it is haram, it is suicide. And we have to respond and spend countless hours saying that the ilm ghaib and the application of the ilm ghaib has a time and place for everything. There is a time and place. There is a maslahat for everything. You know, if in the life of Hazrat Yusuf, Nabi Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, one time he was sitting playing with his child and he was crying. He had tears in his eyes. And his wife comes to him and he says, Oh Yusuf, why are you upset? Why are you down? Why are you so? He says, I'm missing my father. Allah. I'm missing my father so much today. She tells him something. That you are the Nabi of Allah. You are the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can just, in the middle of the blink of an eye, you can go to him or bring him over here with your power of ghaib. You are a Nabi of Allah. You're not just like anybody else. And the reply of Hazrat Yusuf in that time gives us an answer today. He says, it's, it's not a maslihat of Allah right now, it's not for me to meet. Oh. Whatever the order of Allah is at a certain time, that order we have to surrender before. Right. Not what our wishes and desires are. Not that I know what is in that grave, but I won't have it. And so you can see that they go to the attack on the ismat of the Ahlul Bayt themselves. What can I say? Non-Shias have been doing this for a thousand years. We are fine with that. We understand that. We don't care about that. But when the community starts having doubts about the ismat or the ilm or the karam or the generosity of the maqam of Ahlul Bayt, then you are chipping away at the very aqidah and the strength that the Shias have had. You are chipping away at that. And then they say that the economic independence on these khums, they say, well, you know, the khums, 
It's only in the Quran once. Zakat is in the Quran whenever you see Aqimu Salat, you see Wa'atul Zakat. Aqimu Salat, Wa'atul Zakat. You know, you, the ulama, the maulanas, the maraja, the mujtahideen, they want to fill their own pockets, they talk about kum, they talk about, talk about Zakat. My dear friends, my dear brothers, do you know what Zakat is? Khums is a kind of Zakat. Zakat is a kind of, what is Zakat? I don't know if I'm going to say that, I'm going to start with that. Sure. Zakat means purification from the word Tazkiyah, same root. Tazkiyah, Zakat, Zakat, yeah. It means to clarify, so when you give something in the way of Allah, you are doing Zakat of that thing. When you are fasting in the month of Ramadan, you are doing Zakat of the body, you are cleaning the body. When you give zakat in the way of Allah, whether it is khums, fitra, sadqa, khairat, whatever, that is a zakat. So whatever you give in the way of Allah, whether it is your body, your intelligence, you help the Husseiniya, you are the AV head, you are the welfare head, you are the social head, you are the youth committee head, whatever department, that is your zakat. You are sharing your abilities, you are purifying the rest so that you can give in the way of Allah. So these are all kinds of zakat. So when we are giving khums, this is a kind of zakat. We have never said we don't pay zakat. We do pay zakat. But what happens? The Quran is in their minds, the Maharaj are filling their body. This is the kind of arguments that come about. And so the doubts come into the, there's already going to be a community, a group of people who don't want to pay homes anyways. And then we also have the people who when they give the homes, then they say, I want it to go here, 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 like this, this is as if it's their money. You know, one of my teachers very beautifully explained this, defined this. And then there's another argument, and I'm, I'm coming to this as well. Another argument, oh, well, you know, we think Kums is being misappropriated, is being, it's not used properly, it's not being spent properly, so that's why I'm not paying Kums. That's my argument, that's why I'm not paying Kums. A teacher of mine explained this very beautifully. He said that, let us say, you came to me March 29th today, and Ahmad Sahib came to me and he borrowed a thousand dollars from me. I'm just not using it as an example for that. We, we go back a few years so the university of Madhya. He borrows a thousand dollars tomorrow from me. And I said, okay, for one year, I want this one thousand dollars back. A year later, I come back to Montreal and shall a few people invite me. I'll come back. But now you see a totally different Shafiq. I have become an alcoholic. You smell funny, funny drugs on my, in my breath. You see me talking with a slur and a slurp. And you realize that I've come here in the Hosseinia wearing shorts and a t-shirt. You realize some things up. I go to Brother Ahmed and give me my thousand. I need to go to the pub to refill. <laughs> now, Shari Masai. Modernas are not allowed to answer this. <laughs> Shari Masai. I come and ask him for that thousand. You see, I've described the whole scenario. You know that I will take that thousand, I'll go to Haram. I go to him. What is his obligation? If I had the time, if it was still Saturday night, I would have taken a vote and we would have taken marks. Say, you know, I don't think that you just come to the majlis, you listen, you go. You know, I, don't, I don't do majlises like that. I don't do that. You have to take part in the majlis. Eh? So I will ask you the question, what is his obligation? Some of you will say, no, 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 he's going to use it for Ram, so you can keep that thousand dollars, don't give it back to Shafiq Sahib. Some of you say, no, no, just give it to him. So you know, what is the fake Masai Mu'nas? <laughs> I, I said, no, Mu'nas don't can answer. <laughs> you will say to me, those who are knowledgeable in the fiqh, those who know the Sharia, will say, doesn't matter what I use it for, that money was not his, it belongs to me. And it is his obligation because the agreement was one year later, March 3rd, 29th, 2016. It is his wajiba to give it back to me, otherwise he is committing a sin, regardless of what I do with that. Because it is not his money, it is my money. When we are giving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially the khums and the zakat, whatever shari hukuk that we are giving, that doesn't belong to us. It belongs to Imam Sahib al Amr and the representatives of Imam Sahib al Amr may do with it as they deem appropriate for the situation that they are in. It's not your money. You must give it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On salat upon Muhammad al Amr. The Marjayat. The attacks on the Marjayat. And you know, if they're not believing, if some of our own people are not believing in the Ismat of Ahl Bayt, what can we say about the Marjayat? Marjayat, we know they are not Masul. They are trying their best. That's what ijtihad means. 
Ijtihad means a struggle. Koshish karna karna means ijtihad hai na. Mujtahid is one who struggles, who strives, who strives. And you will see a difference. On, in this one document called Fahrenheit 9-11, the director, Mr. Moore, very beautifully, he was interviewing a number of the congressmen, including the president and his, and he was saying how many children of the congressmen, the senators, as well as when the president had his daughters in, on, on the, in the army. And he said, well, the, the prince of England, one of, you know, he's, he was also in the army, in the air force, they're there. They're in the army. But what happens when there's a war? They get put to the back lines. There's a whole front in the front. First of all, they put the Arabs and the Muslims in the front. Hmm. Then they put some other chumchas in the front. <laughs> and then the Americans and the British are behind. So that bullet eye that all okay. Or behind them are these so-called children of the princes and kings and queens and whatever they have. So what happens is we can say that yes, our children are in the war. But they will never be have, has, and have any of them been killed? In the last 20 years since America has <laughs> been poking their noses everywhere in so many different countries, fighting wars, Granada, Haiti, here, there, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, drones, this, that, in Kuwait, Yemen, all these fitna fasaders, do this. Tell me one senator's child who was killed. Give me one queen, king, president's child who was killed. In 25 years, 30 years, 40 years, give me one, just one. Go to the Second World War, tell me anything. I'm coming to a point. Now, when we look at our ulama, we see that the rehber of Iran himself is paralyzed with his right arm because of an explosion that had happened. You will see Ayatollah Mahmoud Pegani, his son was shaheed in the war. Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah's son was shaheed in the war. You will see the ulama from Imam Khomeini and all the backwards and forwards. You will see each of them have given in the way of Allah, in the way their own children. They did not protect their children. Can you stay in the back lines? Let the others go. Let the shabab of the community of the ulama go. Our children will also go this way. May your children will also go. Uh, Mullah Hussein did not keep Ali Akbar and Ali Asghar behind and Ona Muhammad behind. Let Habib and Muslim Ibn Yawsid and the others who are not relatives go. Our children will also go and give their lives in the way of Islam. Muhammad wa ala Muhammad salawah. Our, we will lead by example. We will not tell you to do something that we will not do. We will not tell you to set your children and our children. <laughs> Look at the lives of the Maharaja. Whether it is they themselves, Shaykh Bakr's Sadr story, if I was to begin, I would not be able to control my tears. His, his Shahadat anniversary is coming up in April. The English Shahadat anniversary. How he was killed, how his sister was killed, what happened to Ayatollah Khwe. Three of his sons were Shaheed, directly or indirectly by the Ba'athists. Amrullah Man given their lives. Now, the, the word goes out, Maraja Ijtihad, and I heard one speaker. I'll say it in Gujarat and I'll translate it as well. Is a taklid karwani sujaru che khuda akal nati hai patam ne? Verbatim I'm narrating this. That's why we have to do taklid. Didn't God give you a brain? Now how will my brain work? If I am rich, kum should be 2%. If I am poor, kum should be 40%. If I am rich, zakat al fitra should be $1.50. If I am poor, zakat al fitra should be $50. Whose akal will you use? The rich man or the poor man? Mm. The powerful or the weak? The farmer or the clay maker? Whose akal will you use? Whose akal will be used? And so this, this argument can go on, I don't have the time to go into it. But there is a very important lesson that is to be taught here. That the more they realize, the enemies have realized the strength of Ali Muhammad's followers, that is where the attacks will be. And one of the things that I wanted to come to today was that if you look at if you look at the world around us and you see how and I'm coming to the, the Islamic response to this inshallah there are certain things we like and then Islam tells us to confront that, to oppose that we like our rest, we like to sleep right? what does Islam tell us? wake up for Salat al-Fajr you like your sleep? Wake up though. Give up your sleep? Recite to Rakat Namaz. Recite to Rakat Namaz. Break your sleep. Wake up. You love to eat? I love to eat. 
People look at my size and say, yeah, we already know that you're shaving stuff. You love to eat, mashallah. That's the wrong food, but you love to eat. I see. What does Allah Ta'ala tell us? Ya ayyuhaladzina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam. You love to eat, we know that. 11 months, do whatever you want. The month of Ramadan, stop eating in those daytime. Stop drinking in those daytime hours. We love that. Islam does. Who doesn't love money? What can we do with money? Even children, you give them a dollar bill. I, no, there's no more dollar bills anymore. Give them a five dollar note. It's worth what a dollar bill was worth anyways. Eh? You give them a five dollar note. That's mashallah, mashallah. But if the child is, you know, a young child, it happens to us at home all the time. The toonie is more exciting to them than the five dollar bill. Come on, come on, three dollar bills, eh? <laughs> they will love that. They love money. Just like we love. We love the bigger notes, eh? the browner notes, the greener notes. <laughs> We love money. What does Allah Ta'ala tell us? That from that money, wa'atul zakat, give zakat, give kums, give khairat, give fitrah, wajibats, that are there. And on top of the wajibats, there's the mustahabats. So what happens, whatever we love, Islam tells us to contradict that, to oppose that, to go against that. In the world today, if there are any health experts, you will see that, what do they tell you? You go to the gym, you go for your exercise, you go for those bench presses, you go for those, you know, the cardio, you go for that. What does it do afterwards? You come out of the gym and it's like everything is hurting. I went for a suicide mission there for those, you know, one hour and 20 minutes. And, uh, you know, the, the, the trainer will tell you next day, is it hurting? He'll say, yeah, it's hurting. Good. Huh? Have you lost your mind? He said, I'm hurting. Yes, it's killing. Good. That means you did the right thing. Baba, I'm sore, and you're saying good. Yes, yes, because in English they say, no pain, no gain. <laughs> you see how Islam related to that? You see, there's no pain, there's no gain. The dunya talks about our body pain and gain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of the akhirat's gain and pain. The akhirat is what we look at. Those who do not obey Allah, who do not follow Islam, that is in the khasar, is in the akhirah. But what we're talking about now is that the world sees something and Islam tells us something on the opposite. A family, when they start a family, oftentimes, people come to us, Sheikh Sahib, Zarat, Waqi Jai Ka Mani Yaan, Beta Ho Jai, Narka Ho Jai. No, only because we want to give him the way of Islam. See, they try to justify it to us, right? हम इसको दिन का खाद्य बनाना चाहते हैं क्या बेटी को दिन का खाद्य में खाद्य बनाने में ना बेटियां भी जा सकती हैं जामतो ज़रा भी है ना कि घूमे तो फिर दर्शन शुरू ज़रा क्या है जामतो ज़रा दर्शन नहीं नहीं लेकिन बेटी के लिए दुआ कर सम फैमिली नॉट ऑल नो सेंग व्हाट एवरीबन एंड यू सी इन इं the father will be standing there, 11 sons are there, 11 boys are there. In India, the farms, the workers, you know, 10 sons are there working, you know, they will call them out, Jalal, Jalal, this, that. Having the sun, power, might, strength, the Arabian Peninsula was the same. They took fakhr, they had pride, they had arrogance. I've got this many sons. How many sons do you have? They would have to sit down in gatherings. How many sons do you have? When a visitor would come, they would sit down after their, their, their chai and Arabic coffee and, and all that. They would sit down and say, how many sons do you have? They don't say, how many children do you have? How many sons do you have? What are they? Uh -huh. On the battlefield. I am the father of nine sons. I'm the father of twelve sons. I'm the father. Somebody didn't have a son, they would say, his tail is gone. There's no tail. You know how animals have a tail? They used to refer to those as abtar. No tail. You have nothing. Nothing behind you. Nothing after you. You are basically... Uh, you know, useless. There's nothing. There's nobody to take your name. They have nobody to, to carry on the name after you. Nobody to carry on the mission. That was the norm. That was what society counted upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tests the Prophet. Qasim passes away. Ibrahim dies. Tahir does not survive. The Qurayshis are happy. Ah, They would tell, tell him right on his face, humiliating him, disgracing him. Because the norm of the society was to have sons. You don't even have one. That's when to console the Prophet Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Inna 
entertain that and go so I wish I could do it. I, I'm not a tafsir of this. I wish I could discuss this surah. Unfortunately, this, the, the clock does not permit me. But we have promised you, surely, inna bismillah rahman inna, we certify, we have, we have given you kawthar. Commentators, whether they're talking about how the kawthar in the, in the akhir, in the jannah, or kawthar means kathra, kathir, loss, abundance in the dunya, whatever the case, both are correct. Commentators have given it. I have to say that you have said something about this in this year, in this year, in this Surah so Al-Kawthar, the shortest or one of the shortest of all of the Qur'an in Majid. And then, the Qur'an goes on, فَصَلِّي لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَالِ Give thanks to your Lord, give sacrifice in the way of your Lord. Only because it is not relevant to what I want to come to, I'm having to, I'm out of forcefulness, neglecting this. Then the Qur'an says, إِنَّ شَانِيَكَ وَلْ What they are calling you, we will make them. We will make them find me until the Hura Imam. Find me one descendant of Abu Sufyan. Find me one grandson of Yazid al Or from the Abbasis, you will see some scatterings. I'm not saying you won't. But you will rarely find any of their, them being proud that I'm from Banu Abbas. I'm from Banu Umayya. I'm from the Sufyanis. I'm from the Laos. Find me one. Huh? And yet, every continent you go to, you will see a grandchild of Fatima to Zahra oh, no, no, no. You will see a Sayyid, whether they are Nakhari, Jafari, Zaidi, Bakri, Ridhvi, Musavi, Kadami. You will see them somewhere or another in every continent. Oh, every continent, every inhibited continent. The promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was what? The point was that they thought that their names would go because of their sons. The Quran came to contradict their ideology and say that we will give Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, we will give our Habib, our Taha, our Yasin, our Mudassir, our Muzammir, we will give him a child in every part of the world to show you that we will foreshadow in the Akhirah Zaman in the last era that you are having fakhr, bad, pride and arrogance on your children. We will make sure that Rasul will have every children on every continent his children, but those children will be through none other than Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alayhi Rasulullah. So many ayat of the Quran about the Arabic alphabet. My question now arises. One very famous surah of the Quran al Majid. I brought the Quran al Majid here just so that I don't make any. I just, I'm just going to read you the translation. I'm not, I don't have the time to do the Arabic. Surah Al Atah, Surah Al Dahar, Surah Al San. It goes by a number of names. Dahar and San are the most common names. Some have referred to it as Surah Halata because it starts out with Halata. And in that Surah, from verse 8 onwards, now just a very simple, a very basic introduction, just from the benefit of my youngsters. The Surah is referring to, or at least these ayat from 8 to about 23, are referring to a time when Mullah Hassan, Mullah Hassan, they were children, they were not well. And so, Hazrat Zahra goes to Rasulullah and basically he sees Imam Hassan Imam Hussain, they're not well. He suggests to Hazrat Zahra that keep another. Keep another. Sukhan Mannat Jobi Abdi Kay Sukharak in there. Tarandi was not wasn't. Sukharak. And inshallah, Allah will give them shifa. Allah will give them shifa, we will cure them after. You make a niyat. Hazrat Zahra made them another, made them another, made the niyat that I will fast for three days. Very shortly thereafter, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain get better. They're just children. I'm saying Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain, they're just children. I'm going to go very quickly, inshallah. When the time came that Hazrat Zahra decided to fast, Amir al says, I will also fast. The two children, two young children, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain, they decided they will also fast. <coughs> the servant of the Ahlul Bayt, Janab al Fizza. Allah. He says, Ya bint Rasul, I will also fast. They all decide to fast. They fast for the three days. They meet the day of the fast for the three days. The first day, they are about to break their fast. Somebody comes knocking at the door just at if right at iftar time. It is a poor person. I have no food. Hazrat Zahra had spent the entire afternoon preparing the bread and the food for their iftar. The poor comes, Hazrat Zahra gives her bread away. 
I mean, her mommy says, also take my bread. The two children, young children, they see the example of their parents. Huh? The parents did tell them. They see the example. They give their bread away. How's it the fizza, for whom it is not even an obligation? The poor already has four slices of bread, four breads. She gives hers as well. They break their fast with water and a little bit of salt. Second day, same thing they're about. She's prepared the food for the whole afternoon. At the time of iftar, Ayatim comes, an orphan uh, comes. She says, I have no parents, I have no food, I'm hungry. Again, I will say, I will say, I will give it away, that's the fizzle, gives it away. And then, the third day, now by this time they are extremely hungry. They are in a very difficult situation, but the third day they are about to break the fast, and a seer, a captive comes, a free captive. Same thing happens, they give the bread away. When the Prophet of Islam sees this the next day, the state that they are in after three days of not eating, the state of the Zara herself was, I mean, not well to begin with, not physically strong to begin with, and this state, he sees Hassan Hussain alayhi wasalam, he sees the Tirana Filza, and at that time Jibreel Amin comes with a revelation. He comes with a revelation which is in Surah al I just will very briefly read it to you. The Surah goes on to explain from verse 8, and they give food out of love for Allah to the poor, the orphan, and the captive. We only feed you for Allah's sake, and we do not desire any reward or thanks from you. We fear Allah. We don't want any reward from you. We don't want anything. We don't want any jaza. We do not want any sugar. And then we only feed you for Allah's sake, and we desire from you no reward. We fear Allah from our Lord, from a stern, distressful day. Now, I don't want to go into the whole, but if you get a chance, please read from 8 to 22. In verse 22, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions, He mentions Allah ta'ala, Surely this is a reward for you. Basically they have been told that Jannah, if you look at the verses before, Jannah has been given as a jaza to them. Surely this is a reward for you and your struggle will be, has been accepted, has been recompensed. And what you have done in the way of Allah, it has been rewarded. So jaza, jannah has been given to you and that is your reward. And I was checking uh, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, very similar translation that he says that your efforts have been accepted. Just like how you say, you know, your hajjum, hajjum, mashkura, you know, it's an appreciated hajj. Basically he translated it that way. Shaki Muhammad Shaki has translated it that it has been recompensed. Just two questions I want to conclude with in today's discussion. Who fasted? I just told you, right? Rosa is not a man. Did I say that we kept the man? Amir al Mumideen? Imam Hassan Imam Hussein? Who never fit that? Five of them. I know that I've promised you I will take less time today, and I will, inshallah. But I am. At the crossroads right now. MashaAllah. Ya Rasulullah, you are the Habib of Allah. You are the Rasul of Allah. You love Hassan and Hussein dearly. Why did you make the niyat, Ya Rasulullah? You fast any, anyways, Ya Rasulullah. You stay the nights for ibadah. You fast many of the days. Why don't you fast? My question. I'm a student. I don't know. You love them, Hassan and Hussein. You want them to get better, right? Why these five? Very interesting answer. Let us say I have a tasbih. And I decide to give it to Hussein by I say Hussein. Recite this tasbih every day. Recite one full tasbih of istighfar every day. The day you don't, I want this tasbih back. Okay, tasbih hmm. hmm. A day I don't catch him reciting a stuff from a hundred times, give him my tasbih back. This in Arabic is called Golden Tasmi maybe? Akik Tasmi? Koi to kabul karega ne? Jis din ab nahi paro, this in Arabic is referred to as Ata. Surah Al Ata. Ata means you give something conditionally. That means that you, the day you don't do that, I have a right to ask for my Tasmi back. But let us say that I decide that look, while I'm in Montreal, I will ask. Brother Muhammad to pick me up, take me around, I want to go shopping, I want to go sightseeing, I want to see more Rayal, the actual mall. 
I want to go to Pwan, Jacques-Cartier, I want to go to this Pwan, that Pwan, Champlain Pwan. I want to see everything. I want to see everything in 148 hours. Uh, and I'll tell you, for your efforts, I won't give the bill to Dr. Farishta, I will give the bill to, I will pay you myself, I'll pay you $200 or whatever. But you give me these two days. After the two days pass, he does everything for me, drops it back to Trudeau International, YUL Airport. I pay him his $200. And by this time, after so much trouble with me, he decides to buy a talent or an aspirin. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullahi 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 wa I'm telling you, buy Muhammad Sam, Thero, wait. Why are you buying this? Many months, yeah. Don't call me. I said, but I just paid you. He said, yes, that was my payment. I can do whatever I want with that. That was not Ata, that was Jaza. You did work for me, I paid you, that money is yours. Do whatever you want with it. I can't tell you what to do with it anymore. It's not my money anymore. Because you worked for me, I paid you, that is you just an employee goes to this, your boss doesn't come and tell you, okay, your paycheck is on Friday, but on Saturday, cover that, don't go to uh, Biryani House and buy this or that, no, so it's not a real business. I earned it, this is their jizam. I can do whatever I want with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Ahlul Bayt, and Janabi Fizra, the Quran Majid, no hadith, nobody can say this is Da'if, this is Sahih, this is Ghalat, this is this, this, that, this, no, no, this is Quran Majid. Check any commentary. Allah Ta'ala says, because you did this, O Ahlul Bayt, your jaza is Jannah. Wow. Not Ata, jaza. You worked for it, it is yours. Do whatever you want with it. Let whomsoever you want to enter, enter in it. Wow. Keep out whomsoever you want to keep out. Wow. Nobody will ask because this is your jaza, this is not your Ata. Wow. Now I understand, Ya Rasulullah, why you did not fast. Because if Rasulullah had fasted, then one part of Jannah was his haq as well. Yeah. And that means that those who are the sons-in-law of Rasulullah, or the fathers-in-law of Rasulullah, or the cousins of Rasulullah, or the friends of Rasulullah, or the Sahabi of Rasulullah, or those who are near Rasulullah, could have come to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, we are your family, we are your this, we are your that, we are your cousins, give us a part of Jannah as well. Rasulullah was not involved in this because that was at the door of Ali Muhammad. Fatima Ali Hassan Hussein and Jarabi Faisal, they will allow whoever they want to go to Jannah, they will exclude whoever they want from Jannah. Only for this time Allah Ta'ala said, Ya Rasulullah, you will not keep fasting. We will give this jaza to the Ahlubi. We want to make sure the world understands that when we say, when we say, we want you to understand we have a Quranic foundation from this. We are not saying this out of emotion. We are saying this out of rationale. This is the status of Ali Muhammad. Wow. This is the maqam of Ahlul Bayt. Wow. Wow. So now you understand, we understand where the door and the key for Jannah is. The same place where the key to Madinatul Ilm is. Now we see why Wahua Maghdu makes sense to us. That whoever disappoints Fatima Zahra or angers her, their door for Jannah has been closed. Quran is saying, not me. It's not for me. I do not speak for myself. Member of Rasul is an obligation to Allah. And that is why we, as the followers of Ali Fatima, Asalaamu Sayyidina Ali Musrat wa Salam the Ahlul Bayt, we have to be vigilant against our enemies' plans. We have to be aware and cautious and conscious of what those who are trying to destroy our foundation, how they're doing it, and the reasoning why we have talked about it. That's why the suffering on Ahlul Bayt. And we see the continuation of that suffering till today in Pakistan, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Yemen, in Bahrain, in Syria, in the Eastern Hijaz. The list goes on and on and on. We see what they have tried to do to us in so many ways. It started out right from the place of Sakifa. It has been written in history that had somebody stopped the house of Fatima burning from burning. And nobody would have had the strength to burn the tents of Zainab and Umar Kuthum in the battlefield of Karbala. If somebody had been there to stand up for baby Mohsen, but who would have had the audacity to kill Ali Asghar in Karbala? 
yesterday when we were talking about the Shahada of the Sayyada, we had mentioned that in the last year, okay, in the last point, Imam Ali calls Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein Zainab and Imam Kulthum to say the Akhari Khudah, the last Khudah. The Imam notices that each of the three children, Imam Hassan, Zainab and Imam Kulthum, they come near their, their mother's dead body and they come and say Khudah to their mother, but the Imam notices, Imam Ali notices that Imam Hussein is staying behind. <laughs> Imam Hussain आगे नहीं बढ़ते आखिरी खुदा फिस करने के लिए मेरे मौला हैरान हो जाते हैं मेरे मौला ने कहा है बेटा हुसैन माँ को आखिरी खुदा फिस तो कर लो इमाम हुसैन ने कहा बाबा जब भी मैं माँ के करीब जाता हूँ माँ ने हार बलंद करके मुझे गले लगाती मैं डरता हूँ कि ऐसा ना हो जाए कि आज मैं करीब जाओ और माँ मुझे गले लगाने को तैयार नहीं मौले लिखते हैं तो historians write that when Imam Hussein goes close to the grave to the body of Fatima, her hands reach out to him and then go out to embrace Imam Hussein and say, "Mr. Hussein, आखिर बता भी इसके लिए माँ भी हर अल्लाह दारो when my Imam has made the grave of Fatima there." And he is taking the body there, Allahu Akbar. My salams on the sabr of Morali. My salams on the sabr of Amir al-Mu'minin wa Imam al-Muttaqin. He looks towards Rosa and Rasul. He says, Ya Rasul Allah, this amana, <laughs> this trust that you have given me, Ya Rasul Allah, I am returning her to you, but in a state. In a damaged state, in a state that has been injured, Ya Rasul Allah, forgive me. And he is saying, Khudab is with tears in his eyes. And the tears were such that even the grave was filling with the tears of Mullah. He buries Fatima Sahara and he's praising her that this was a flower from Jannah. This was a rose from Jannah which has gone back to Jannah. But has Leah left its fragrance on the hands of Ali? إن لله وإن إليه راجعون. الله أكبر سلام الله. أكسبت أول بعد يا فاطمة زهرة بس شفاعت الذي يفتح جل جل ربنا تقبل منا إن شاء الله سبحانه العليم ما تنفعت ليا.